Father, that's our testimony this morning. That if we have the faith to let it go, you would do the heavy lifting of dealing with whatever it is we drop in your hands. So we let it go because, God, the truth of the matter is holding on to it has been killing us. It's been draining us. So today we let it go. We leave it at the spiritual altar of our lives so that we can make room for what you have for us in this next season. It is my prayer now that you would allow us to let go of any distractions that would hinder us from hearing what you shall say to your church today. Spirit of the living God, speak, for we need a word. Someone needs clarity. Someone needs direction and heightened discernment today, and it's found in your word. So God, speak words that are not on this pad that will give life to your people. Preach to me and then through me, we pray in Jesus' name. And if you've made up in your mind, you're going to let it go. Clap your hands and give God praise. While you're clapping, help me thank God for one of the baddest worship arts ministries in the world. We honor God for them. Well, listen, before I jump into the Word of God, October is Clergy Appreciation Month, and as you know, um, I think one of the dangers in the body of Christ is the spirit of familiarity. Sometimes you can be with someone so long that they just become common to you. But the Bible says that literally whenever you have a good leader, it shows how much God loves you. Because the Bible says that I give you pastors, watch this, not out of a good seminary, but out of my own heart. Which means I don't care how you feel about men and women and whatever proclivities we may or may not have, they're still God's servant. And every week after dealing with our prayer requests and burying your cousins that ain't been to church all their life, going to see our loved ones in prison that ain't gonna come to jail, come to church after they get out, and after responding to emails, the man of God still has to stand with a fresh word because our lives hang in the balance of what God gives to our pastor. So I'm going to ask today, we've celebrated his birthday, we've celebrated his anniversary, but I'm going to ask you to do something, and he doesn't even know we're doing this. Whatever it is, whatever kind of seat it is, I just want you to, would you put that graphic on the screen for me, please? Our pastor's cash app. We want to sow into our pastor today for clergy appreciation. Whatever it is, how, this is not no special request. However you feel about the man of God, I want you to pour into him today yeah. and be a blessing to him. Amen. Amen. Let's jump into the word of God. Colossians chapter 3. Pastor has done an amazing job challenging us with this series. I wish I could just say amen and sit down because he's literally said everything. But um, here's where God led us this week. Colossians chapter 3, verse number 12. It says, therefore, as God's chosen people, if you're reading from the New King James Version, it says, as the very elect of God. As God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, with kindness, with humility, with gentleness, and with patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you have a grievance against someone. Here's why you got to do it. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Verse 15, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful. And this is the word of God. We say thanks be to God. Would you look at your neighbor and help me rehearse my sermon topic to your neighbor and say, neighbor, walk it like you talk it. That's what I want to talk today. Walk it 
walk it like you're talking. You might, you might be seated. Walk it. In this Let It Go series, Pastor has challenged us and told us that it costs too much to not let it go. Then the second week, he helped us to understand it's a process. That regardless of how saved you are, you don't just walk through this thing overnight. And then last week, he challenged us to do the work, not on your neighbor, but I'm working on me. And church, I'll be honest, I was trying to find a way because I felt like we were in a series and the bases were loaded. Trying to figure out what can we say after all of this. And when we come to Colossians chapter three, here's what I heard the Lord said, after we have talked about letting it go, it is now time for us to demonstrate what we have been talking about. Colossians chapter 3 is not a shouting text. It's one of those texts, Pastor, you got to dig in and try to figure out what it is that God is saying. There's a couple of things that jump out. Paul does his writing and he talks about there's a new mission and a new mind and a new message and a new motivation that the Christian ought to have. There are two divisions in Colossians. It tells us, watch this, two things, what to take off and what to put on. This is the text that most people skip over because in church, we like talking about salvation. We shout when people get saved and shout when they come down the aisle. We get an A when it comes to salvation. But this book teaches and challenges us not just to sit in the moment of salvation, but in the life of every believer, there ought to be some transformation. See, I told y'all y'all were going to shout over this because uh, salvation is when you give your heart to God and you give your hand to the preacher and to the deacon. But after you come out that back room and after you finish LinkedIn and new members class and after you serve a ministry, this book teaches us uh, that if you're going to let it go, uh, your life ought to reflect the God that you've been thinking about. And I hear you. I see you said, Pastor Kim, I've been saved longer than you've been born. And that might be true. But picture with me for a moment you working at Walmart for years, being the best cashier they've ever had. People love coming in your line because you can get them in and get them out. But then after a season of working at Walmart, you leave and go work at Sam's Club. Regardless of how good of an employee you have been at Walmart, you still have to go through orientation to learn how to do things at Sam's Club. Lord, help me today. And what this book teaches us, it is the new Christian orientation on how you ought to live. And if we're going to let it go, here's what Paul teaches us. That it's not just good enough for you to talk about forgiveness. Because anybody can talk. Talk is cheap. But does your walk reflect what you've been posting and talking about? In his book, Gracias, which means thank you, Henry Nouwen says, the most important question for me is not how do I touch people, but how do I live in the world in which I am called to speak to? Listen to what he says. If we speak the words of the gospel and at the same time don't live the words that we are speaking, then we will cause people to be conflicted about a God they cannot see. Here's my question to you. If your life was the only Bible somebody ever read, what would your walk say about the talking you've been doing. Paul teaches us that, watch this, your Christian attire should match your Christian maturity. I'm not talking about the clothes you got on unless you tune me out. I'm not talking about you wearing loop gear or paraphernalia, but what he's saying is not your church or your company or your organization, but what are you wearing? 
He says the fruits of the spirit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Watch this. He says the fragrance of the kingdom is forgiveness. Lord, help me. I'm trying to do the best I can. I, I know we like talking about favor. But you will never live in the fullness of the favor of God if you walk around harboring unforgiveness. And all pastor had been trying to teach us all month long is that you've got to learn, thank you Chanel, to let it go now so that you don't miss out on what God has for you next. Can I preach to somebody in here and tell you that there's some favor that you are blocking out of your own life because you're walking around with unforgiveness and bitterness and backbiting and malice. You've got to learn how to let it go. And if you're going to walk it like you talk it, Paul says, watch this, you can't just walk around. I hear you. I'm a whole, they ain't going to ever let that go. No, they, they, they not going to ever outlive what they did to me. And that's the problem. They have moved on. And you are still stuck. Some of y'all couldn't even go to homecoming this past month because uh, when you saw them, it was triggered uh, and they living their best life and you standing back looking at them. Uh, they didn't forget about what they did to you uh, and here you are stuck in the same cycle and I came to tell you this is the last stop before we take off uh, into a new sermon series. You've got to learn uh, how to let it go. I know you brought your emotions uh, to church today uh, but this is the day when you walk out of these doors uh, and when you lost golf. You've got to learn how to walk it like you talk it. So, so how, how, what, what, what happens? What happens? Dr. Akeem, if, if you're going to walk it like you talk it, first of all, if you have literally let it go, if you have, watch this, if you are really healed, there will be a shift in our language. Okay. It's in the Bible. He says, um, put on kindness, gentleness, patience, because when you are really healed, whatever is in your heart will come out of your mouth. Okay, I, I need some people in here who, who, who ain't always been saved and you know you still uh, got a short fuse and it's not about uh, what people say to you. Thank you, sister, for she, she jumped up. Uh, it's not about what people say to you, uh, but it's how they say it to you. Uh, and you just say, listen, be careful uh, how you talk to me. But I've discovered uh, that if you're really healed uh, and if you really have let it go, uh, when you open your mouth, your language will change. Can people tell that you are really saved not based on your shout but based on your conversation? I, I, let, let me dig a little deep. Um, the kingdom has a language. I know we don't talk about that now, but because we believe that we're supposed to be in the world, but not of the world. What, what the old folks said, like, let me go back to my roots. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. What, what they were trying to teach us uh, is that I'm from another world. I'm just visiting down here and the kingdom I come from uh, has a different language than the kingdom of this world. The kingdom of this world says that if somebody cuss you out, you cuss them back out. Uh, the kingdom of this world says if you do something for me, uh, I'm going to get you back. But I'm not from this kingdom. Lord, help me do the best I can. Well, I never forget, I never forget, I, after my first trip to Uganda, I was leaving. I never forget it was a Sunday night. I was leaving hugging people and I said, I'm going back home. I'll see y'all the next time. And this older lady, they called the grandma, the older lady's over there, Jaja. She said, no, 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 my son. She said, no, this is your home. And she gave me on a piece of paper some words. She said, the next time I see you, you must learn how to speak your native language. What she was teaching me is that you are a part of this kingdom. 
Come here, church. And what Paul is teaching us today is that language that we have is forgiveness. And when people hear your dialect in the kingdom, they ought to know that you've let it go because you are walking it like you're talking because there's been a shift in your language. But, but secondly, church, not only is there a shift in your language, it shifts our lifestyle. Um, um, I know they told us growing up that most of us said these words, I can't wait till I get grown. I'm going to do what I want to do, go where I want to go, and can't nobody tell me nothing. Newsflash, that's a lie. Okay, let, let me say it this way. If you are carrying something, you can't just do what you want to do. You can't go where you want to go and act how you want to, I got Bible for you. Paul says, write this, he says, bear with each other, one another, if there is any grievous against you. And one of the things we have to be careful of in the body of Christ is speaking in tongue in the sanctuary and walking past each other in the lobby. How in the world can you be so saved and stuck up in here that you can speak to God and walk right past your brother and sister? You ain't got nothing inside of you because the Bible says you ought not need the Holy Spirit to convict you. You ought not be able to sleep at night when you've done somebody wrong because your lifestyle ought to represent what you've been doing. Paul says all that shouting you're doing, I ain't impressed with it. You can serve on every ministry, all 50 of them at the Luke Church. But if you don't have anything in your life, uh, everything you got is that sounding brass and tinkling cymbals. Now hear me. I'm not saying forgiveness is easy. But it is necessary. And... Um, because of our lifestyles, you cannot, hear me, choose not to do this. It's not an option. I, I'm not trying to oust anybody, but I think one of the things that we have done in the kingdom is acquiesce to the world in ways that the world has not acquiesced to the kingdom. <clears throat> let, 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 me, let me make my point. If you were to go to any court in the city, they have a dress code. You can't come in there any kind of way. You can't, I don't care how important you are, you can't take your cell phone in some courthouses and in some city hall meetings. Watch this. You can't just walk in dressed any kind of way. Newsflash, some clubs got dress codes. <laughs> but when it comes to the kingdom, where the Bible says just come as you are, God understands. And that means that's true for immature believers. But after a certain point in your walk, you ought not even have nobody to tell you about a dress code because my lifestyle says I ought to change. I'm sorry, Pastor. I'm, so, I'm sorry. And I'm not talking about the outward appearance. I'm talking about what you're wearing on your heart. Because you can have a long dress and a three-piece suit and still be mean, still be hatred. What are you wearing? I'm sorry. I tried to preach something else. And here's... Here's why it's so important. Y'all sit down. Here's why it's so important. Because there is a war going on in all of us. There is the you that God is calling you to be and the you that you are comfortable being. Let me see if I can make it plain. Uh, you remember in that movie, Coming to America 2? It's when they find out that Akeem in the movie. Let me make sure I make it plain. The Akeem in the movie 
has a son that he was unaware of. They go to New York, they get the boy, they bring him back to Zamunda. And they're in the living room in this particular scene trying to teach him how to be like royalty. And the boy gets frustrated and says, I'm from Harlem. People don't act like this in Queens. And the granddaddy says, that's the problem. You have been living in Queens, but you are from Zamunda. God is saying to you, where you live does not change who you are. You are not from this world. You are called to a higher standard. There's a lifestyle you gotta live. I don't care how they walk in Queens. You are carrying something different. So you gotta walk a certain way. Because if you're gonna walk it like you're talking and let it go, it ought to show in your language. It ought to show when you shift your lifestyle. But third and finally, when you let it go and walk it like you talk it, it solidifies our light. It it says right here, and over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them together. And let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. What that's teaching us is that you and I carry a light that literally translates into our witness, which means it's important for us to let it go because what you do is not just about you. I'm sorry, church. I wish I had a shout message today, but... Um, I, 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 I said ouch while I was preparing the same way y'all saying ouch now. Why, it, 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 we in this thing together. That what Paul is trying to challenge us is that when you let it go, you don't just let it go because of what somebody did to you. But you don't want people that are attached to you to have to deal with generational trauma because you didn't want to deal with it. I need somebody here to say, I'm trying to fight this battle so my kids won't have to deal with it. I've got to let some stuff go now so that my daughter won't know this trauma, so that my sons won't have to struggle like me. I've got to let it go. I'm done. It solidifies your light because um, if my seminary professor, Dr. John W. Kennedy was here, he would say that... um, that stars don't produce their own light. Let me preach to this side. (laughs) Stars don't have their own light. Whenever you see a star shining in umble, it's because the sun is shining somewhere else. Church folk don't know when to shout. So I got to make sure that I walk it like I talk it because the light that I'm carrying is not, I know they try to teach us that you're the plug, but watch this, uh, what good is a plug if you ain't connected to the power source? I don't care how smooth you are, how good you look, uh, you ain't got nothing if you ain't got the power of the Holy Ghost down on the inside. Here's why you gotta walk it like you talk it. Um, True, true story. Um, when I first got here, a couple of months after being here, I was hanging out down in the Heights area. And, you know, if you have been down there, when you turn down some of the streets, there are one-way streets. And um, I was not being a good a citizen. I was on my phone, not paying attention. I'm, I'm being honest. And I made the wrong turn. And um, when I turned, I quickly noticed that everything that was coming was coming towards me. So I quickly turned around. What I didn't see was an unmarked police car. He, threw, he flicked them lights on quick. I'm like, man, you had to be, I mean, were you behind me or something? Because, I mean, I thought I corrected myself quicker than anybody could see me. He pulled me over. He asked me, you know, 
license registration? Have you been drinking? And I, I, I said, no, sir. I said, um, it, it's I, I almost like the, new, the, the book of Acts. It's, it's just the ninth hour of the day. It's too early. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know some of y'all want to say that, you know, I, no, I, I had not been drinking. I said, I, I just really made a wrong turn. So um, I had to be careful because this particular day I was wearing a Luke t-shirt. Now, all the things were going through my head. Lord, I'm going to get arrested. I'm going to get a ticket. I got this Luke t-shirt on. I can see it now in the, hum in the humble chronicles. Executive pastor of the Luke church. And I got building bridges. I guess I'm doing some prison ministry about building bridges. You know, all the things, that's how the enemy get all the things going through my head. And the, the, the police officer, he said, sir, did you know this was a one-way street? I said, sir, I'm not from here. I apologize. I was distracted. And here's what that police officer said to me. Two things. He said, first of all, you not being from here is not an excuse. Because you're supposed to know the law. Ignorance is not an excuse. I said, oh man, I'm going to get a ticket. I'm trying to figure out. But this is what he said that blessed me. He said, but I'm going to let you go. He said, because you're the first person I didn't stop today that admitted what they did. Y'all will catch it later. He said, thank you for being honest. Just make sure you're being careful. But church, this is how the enemy works. I got on the interstate on 16, coming back home, and somebody cut me off. And Deacon Dre, all the words I thought I had been delivered from, started coming back. I'm saying all kinds of stuff. And then the Holy Spirit convicted me and said, wait a minute, sir. Don't you forget that a few minutes ago when you were in the wrong, the man let you go. So how dare you hold somebody else? All I'm trying to tell you is that whenever you try to walk around and act like somebody ain't did nothing to you, you got to remember all the stuff that God has let you go from. So today, this last series of Let It Go, you have to let it go. Watch this. No, they ain't say they were sorry. They meant what they did. You may never get an apology, but you got to let it go because when you think about all the stuff that God has let you escape from, how dare you hold somebody else to it? So today, if you're able to stand, I invite you to stand. You've heard all these sermons about let it go. But today is the day you really put your money where your mouth is.